Hello, this is Cheryl Arias Wicker, and we are at the ICVM Catalyst Conference in Orlando, Florida. And tonight we just heard Jerry Jenkins as the keynote speaker at the dinner, and we're waiting for him uh, to finish talking to all of his fans. In the meantime, we have a little pre-show entertainment for you. We have Tori Martin, and you are a show in itself. I am a show in itself. <laughs> I am. In fact, my shirt is my opening test pattern, and as soon as this is adjusted, then I start the show. No. <laughs> okay, well, I know I've interviewed you on Christian Movie yeah. Connect, but I mean, I just, you know, just... Have, I'm just drawn to you like a magnet, you know, it's the hair, I think. Oh, yeah. You know, you look like Fabio, women do get drawn, have a tendency to follow around you. You know, before you talk to Jerry Jenkins, I want to tell you something. I am a huge fan of Jerry Jenkins. Me too. I have been, this is my fifth conference that I've been at with him, and not once have I ever introduced myself to him because he intimidates me. But I'm friends with his son, Dallas, and I just told Dallas, you know, maybe this time I'll introduce myself. All through dinner tonight, Jerry Jenkins sat right behind me. He was right there. And I just sent this to his son, Dallas. And I said on the title, got a picture with your dad. But then you open up and it says, I chicken out again on meeting him, but I'm getting closer. And that's him right there. That is me and Jerry Jenkins. Can you see that? I think he's smiling. I, I swear he is smiling. Okay, here's what we got to do. Okay. I'm going to introduce you to Jerry Jenkins on camera for the whole world to see. No, I've got to go to the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I see him in the background behind us right now. If we hold still, I'll reverse my camera and we'll get okay. a picture of him with both of us right between us. Yeah, One, okay. two, three. <laughs> okay, well, we're still waiting. Hopefully, he's coming in a minute. Yeah. Just stick keep, around. Keep waiting for him. Mm -hmm. He'll be left behind. That's right. <laughs> and we finally caught up with Jerry Jenkins. It is so good to have you with us, and we enjoyed hearing you speak tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good to be with you. Okay. Well, uh, everyone knows you as a writer of Christian fiction and screenwriter and... Um, you're best known for the Left Behind series. So tell me how you first got into writing and, and um, how this became a passion for you. Actually, I became a writer when I was 14 years old. I was a sports writer for local papers, and I was too young to drive yet, of course, so my parents had to drive me to the ball games and then drive me to the newspaper office, and they paid me a, a penny per inch that appeared in the paper. I mean, not a penny, a dollar. I wasn't that destitute. <laughs> but... Uh, but so I consider myself a professional writer since I was 14, and I thought I would be a sports writer. That was my sort of my passion. But uh, I was also a Christian, and then I felt called to full-time Christian work. And I realized that God, you know, will not necessarily call you uh, until after He's prepared you. You know, I mean, I still I'm still being prepared. But I remember thinking that I might have to give up the writing to become a pastor or a missionary. But He called me to Christian writing, so I've been doing it ever since. Very good. So how did the, the whole Left Behind series come about? Because that's a very popular series, and it's like known, it's kind of made a, its mark in Christian film. And uh, how did that all come to be? Actually, the idea for the, for the Left Behind series was Dr. Tim LaHaye. He's a prophecy expert and a former pastor, and, uh, but he's not a fiction writer. So our, our mutual agent put us together, and we hit it off. Uh, Tim is the same age as my parents were before they passed, so there's sort of a father-son dynamic there. And uh, I loved the idea and loved working with him, and, and uh, so that's how it started. I understand that you uh, wrote Billy Graham's story. How did you manage to get the rights for that, and, and how was it writing his, his life? Well, it was really interesting. I remember being approached and asked if I wanted to, in essence, compete for this honor. And um, I remember somebody from the Graham organization asking me um, what qualified me to assist him with his memoirs. And... While I could have said, you know, I've done a lot of life stories, and I have, of a lot of famous people, athletes, and things like that, and had written a lot of fiction and nonfiction, the first answer that came to my mind, because I wasn't prepared for it, is I said, I'm not qualified, and I don't think anybody's qualified. It would be a privilege, and I would give it all I have. And that resonated with them somehow, and I was chosen to help him with it. So it was just, it was a privilege of a lifetime, really. Such an amazing man. So I'm sure you 
have to spend a lot of time with someone to, to be able to tell their story. Yeah, I spent uh, a lot of time with him, 12 or 13 months off and on traveling from, we lived in Chicago at the time, traveling down to North Carolina to spend time with him. And uh, my wife says uh, every time I came back, I was like two feet off the ground. It's like I've been in the presence of God himself, you know. <laughs> like a glow. It's true, <laughs> Put a, yeah. A towel and, over your face or something. Exactly. And that, well, that, and the, the best thing was he's the same person behind closed doors that he is in public. And uh, he's truly a humble guy. Yeah. yeah. Well, you told an interesting story tonight about, you know, Billy Graham saying, you know, that I'm a failure. What it, how did that come about? Well, I was asking, I was telling him that, you know, people put him on a pedestal and, and what does he have to teach them about their own spiritual lives? And he said, people shouldn't put me on a pedestal because he said, when I feel, when I think about the number of times I've failed the Lord, I feel this low. And he leaned right out of his chair and put his hand flat on the floor. And I thought... Who, who would think that about Billy Graham? And uh, so I finally hit on the right question to ask him, and that was, how do you maintain your own spiritual disciplines? And he said, you know, he, it's searching the scripture daily, and he never misses, and pray without ceasing. And I said, you, you pray without ceasing? He said, I do. He said, I, and I have every waking moment since I received Christ as a teenager. He said, I'm praying now as I'm talking to you. And uh, it's really convicting. Going back uh, to some of the movies, uh, you... Um we're behind the movie What If, which I've seen that one. It's a very funny movie. Uh, so t give me the, the background on that one. It's, it's won some awards, too, I believe. Yeah, we're really proud of uh, What If. Dallas, uh, my son, directed that. And um, I'm not sure where he got the script. It was not something I'd written. Some of the things we've done in the past have been from my books and short stories. But uh, they just loved that script. And, and the casting was great. And uh, it was listed among the top ten family pictures. Uh, last year against things like Despicable Me and Toy Story 3 and Narnia and that type of thing. So uh, that was a, a really fun thing to be involved with. You know. And what, what was your actual role in the movie? I was the money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you, know, you got to have that. They, they, you know, they call you executive producer. That just means you're writing checks, yeah. you know. But, uh, you know, a lot of times Dallas will have me involved in, in you know, if there's a story problem or if there's an arc they want to hit. Um, but it just happens that on this one, I was unable to make it to the set. I was uh, doing my own thing at that time. And uh, I love to be on the set and, and help out. But I had very little to do with this one. And uh, ironically, it's the most successful one we've ever done. So I don't think I'll have much to do with them in the future either. So do you enjoy being involved in these types of projects with your son, though? I really do. It's great fun, and he's, you know, he's so talented. I learn a lot from him, um, and I, but I realize how, much, how different the, the mediums are. Writing books is way different from, from scripts and, uh, and from movies, and um, he loves being on the set, and if they have to do 14, 15, 20 takes to him, that's life. After a while, I'm like, really? We're going to do this again? You know? <laughs> really? like, so okay, I'm over that. <laughs> I love to watch the, the final version, yeah. Well, thank you so much for being with us. We just really appreciate you sharing with us and spending a few minutes for, so we could get to know you. And we just wish you the continued um, blessings and everything that you do. I appreciate it. Good okay. All right. And tune in again tomorrow. We'll have another interview from ICBM. Thanks for joining us.